Welcome to the Ed Hoddle Show for week number 12, game number 11, and there are very few teams in Division Three that get to say they play in week 12, and Stevenson is one of them as they make the Max Centennial Bowl. Ninth straight year that Stevenson has been in the postseason, and this year they'll take on a new opponent. They take on the Bears of Rosanna's College. I'm here with Cody Chad Hoddle. Ed, congratulations on the bowl bid, and uh, you know, you talked about making the postseason for nine straight years, nine straight seasons. I'll say the COVID year, there wasn't a postseason. But what does it mean for the program to make a postseason appearance nine straight times? Um, I, I think it's special. You, you know, I think we, you know, we did the math for the guys, and I put together a little PowerPoint Monday to kind of explain to them um, how important it is and, and and kind of how unique it is. By my count, somewhere between 180 and 185 teams are turning their gear in this week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's out of the 241 teams currently playing Division Three football. So it, it is incredibly special. It's not something that, um, you know, that I think we take for granted. I think we've got to take advantage of the opportunity. Um, you know, I use myself as an example. I played 16 seasons of football and played in the postseason twice mm-hmm. um, as a player. So it, it is, I think, unique. Um, you know, I think to some degree, you know, we, we, we've gone through the disappointment of it not being the NCAA tournament. Certainly that is the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think we're a couple of plays away from 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 reaching that goal. So we're close and we've got to use this opportunity to, to go play, a, you know, a really, really good physical or sinus football team. And, um, you know, any opportunity to play is it should it should be cherished. Well, talking about physical football, the game against Eastern Exciting football game we had talked about last week. You know, Eastern with the first year program. They came in, and I'll tell you what: for a, for a two and seven program coming in, they were they were talented, they were physical, and that game it just seemed like in the last it just went back and forth in that last that final quarter. Sure, you know, I think from a talent perspective, um, reminded me a lot of us in year one. Um, you know, talented but youthful, um, not particularly strong because you know you hadn't been in the weight room Mm -hmm. you you know but but you could see you know they're they're gonna be a problem Mm -hmm. you know and and i think you know they're they were well coached i thought their their plan was good um you know i think we may have looked past them a little bit i don't know that we had our best football on saturday um you know it's a great game everybody got their money's worth that's for sure this is true and there was a couple of things that i want to circle back to that game obviously landon winterbaum gets the start does well in the first half goes down with an injury. Nair comes in, and I thought Nair played great in the second half, probably his best half of football all year, and he needed to do that. I mean, he put two drives together to get, you know, obviously get us back in the lead, and then when, you know, Eastern came down and tied it again just to to get us going. Sure. You know, and I think what you saw, you know, you saw, you know, Landon did some good things in the first half. Um, you know, made, made made a mistake or two here and there. You, you know, that's what you expect with, with freshman quarterbacks. Um, certainly weren't upset with him. You know, understand mm-hmm. what he sees and those types of things. And, you know, Nair, you know, coming in and um, he hadn't thrown a ball all week. Literally hadn't touched a football since the Saturday prior. Um, I think it's a tribute to him you know, and his ability to understand the offense is, you know, he, he was locked in and practice quite obviously um, to be able to come in and, and have that. And like you said, have the, probably the best half of football he's had all year um, was impressive. And, you know, what you what you saw, I think is the contrast between a guy who's spent, who has spent almost three full years in our, in our offense to a guy that's spent three full months. Mm-hmm. So the, the definitive, definitive difference for sure. And a couple other things that I wanted to note about, the Eastern game was one Zachary Rutch. And we had gotten a penalty on a touchdown. Zachary Rutch kicks the ball basically out of the end zone, 80 yards. I mean, there are very few kickers that can do that. And I think it energized the crowd. And then he did it again. He kicked the long into the end zone. And he had a heads-up play because if he hadn't made that tackle, Easter was going to return that kick for, for a touchdown. Sure. I think, you know, I think we get spoiled with Zach. You know, I think those those other the other ten guys get used to people not bringing it out, and that kid brought that ball out. It was you know, had he taken that the distance, it would have been a hundred and eight hundred nine yard return. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, fortunately Zach was able to make that play, but he's been a weapon all year. Um, you know, second team All Conference guy. Um, you know, and that's a guy that just does 
kickoffs. Right. So, you know, for him to be recognized at the conference level like that is, is certainly a big honor for him and um, somebody we're going to miss for sure. And speaking of all conference, all conference came out. Tuesday, we had 11 guys on the team. Good mix of first team, second team, and match. And talk about the guys that, 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 what it shows that the talent level we have at Stevenson to get 11 guys on the team. Well, you know, I think first of all, and, and I talked to the guys last night post practice, you know, announced all of the guys in front of the team. Um, you know, those are team awards. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certainly individual names attached to those uh, awards and, and that recognition, uh, but they are very much team awards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you look at our first team guys, um, you know, Ben had has had a phenomenal, you know, a phenomenal fall. Dan Johnson's had a phenomenal fall. Um, you know, Tyler Blake, Gavin Shields, the honorable mention guys, the boy of um, you know, and, and, you know, of course I'm going to forget two or three of them right. if I try to name them all, but you know, I, I it, it's great to have those honors and, and super excited for those guys. But, you know, again, more excited for our team, you know, 11 is a good number, you know, when you start looking at, at the grand scheme of things and, um, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, exciting that many of those guys are coming back. Yep. And we'll talk about now the Max Centennial Bowl, obviously playing Ursinus for the first time. Full disclosure, I worked at Ursinus for eight years, so I'm very familiar with the program. Coach Gallagher does a great job up there. Um, you know, they they offensively, they're very good. Defensively, they're very good. So what can we expect out of the game against Ursinus? Uh, you, you know, I think what will end up deciding the game is who wins the, the, the physical battle. Um, one thing that kind of jumps off the tape to me while in watching and evaluating is they are physical. They are well coached. They are physical. Um, it is a very downhill type running scheme. Um, so we're going to have to match that physicality defensively. Um, you know, their defense is, 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 is really, really good, you know, and we're, we're going to have our hands full and, you know, going to have to try to exploit some weaknesses and, and you know, quite frankly, going to just have to go make some plays. And, and one of the things, too, the last question I have for you is that there are very few teams in Division Three that say they can end their season on a win. You know, obviously, looking back on the season, now from you'll have more time to look back on it as the weeks goes on. But, you know, coming into this last game, your thoughts on this season? Um, I'm excited for the future. Um, I think we took some, some really, really good steps um, you know, we appear old on paper, but we were certainly not old in experience. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of youth in our program that got a chance to play throughout the year. So certainly excited, um, you know, saying goodbye to, to 30 seniors. Um, you know, again, I, I said it Saturday, you know, these guys kind of weathered the COVID storm and, you know, we're a part of kind of putting things back together after mm -hmm. COVID. And I think it speaks to their character um, and their commitment to not only our football program, but our university as a whole, mm -hmm. that they stuck it out and they're still here, um, you know, and they're finishing out their careers the right way. And so, you know, that's always, you know, a, a little bit sad. Um, so it, it's always mixed emotions when you, when right. you end the year, but, you know, proud of, Proud of what we were able to put on film and, and excited to get, get rolling in the spring. All right, Coach. Good luck today. Thank you. It will be Ursinus and Stevenson in the Max Centennial Bowl from Collegeville. Thanks for joining us all season long on the Ed Hoddle Show. Enjoy the game and go Stanks.